Good evening, the state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. The Shah village of Western Armenia, known for its seven castles, is completely empty. Symbol of victory and survival of an Armenian, 29th anniversary of Berzor liberation. Military movements near undemarcated borders are responsible and provocative, Jake Sullivan tells Elia. Azerbaijan is moving troops from Nakhijevan to Sunik border, Karasham Cup. 40 centuries old witness of history, animation video at the History Museum of Armenia. Turkey is one of the countries with the most imprisoned intellectuals. Centuries old Armenian cemetery near Shushi partially destroyed. Solo singers of Opera Theatre to perform at the 19th International Music Festival. The Shah village was one of the most fertile villages in western Armenia. It is located in Jizra Sharnak province. Now all the inhabitants are spread somewhere. Now the church is silent. The village is empty. People are not even allowed to work in the gardens. Since the Turkish parliament passed the 1998 report of the Migration Commission, according to which the Turkish state evacuated, burned or destroyed almost 4,000 villages and settlements in the 1990s. The history of this village with seven castles dates back to the period of the Assyrian Empire. Throughout the village there are historical castles, sculpted reservoirs, caves, Rakat stations, ancient stone steps, which are obvious evidence of the presence of thousands of indigenous Armenians in western Armenia for thousands of years. There are 365 rooms in one of the castles, and the rocky caves inside the castle testify to the importance of protecting them from war. There are two springs in the village. Cold water comes from one and hot water comes from the other. When the village of Shah was evacuated in 1994, 80% of the families settled in the center of Jizre. The rest left for different countries. About 30 years ago, with the help of the Soviet army, the Azerbaijani army expelled the villages in the Bertazor sub-region of Shushi from Armenians within the framework of the Ring military operation. All the men were arrested and taken to Shushi and Lachin. Anushavan Grigorian, who had moved from Yerevan with his family, was shot in the basement of his house. The Turks took to Baku and tortured to death Arno Mogorchan, deputy chairman of the Bertazor Self-Defense Council, and Haraj of Yechzahog. A year later, the victory of our people took place. Shushi was liberated on May 8-9, 1992. The people of Bertazor returned home on May 17, and the Turks left Lachin and Zabug on May 18. 29 years ago, on this day, May 18, Miatsum, our call of the Artsakh movement, took place. The land road was opened and the connection between Artsakh and the motherland was facilitated. A year later, we also liberated the territories separating Artsakh from Sunik, the entire Hakari River. Kashatau, the seventh region of Artsakh, was created by the decision of the National Assembly of the Republic of Artsakh on December 2, 1993, the administrative center of which became Lachin, being renamed as Historical Berzor. The first inhabitants came to Berzor in the spring of 1994. There were 52 secondary schools in the Kashatak region until the War of 2020. Four out of 54 communities, Berzor, Koshavan, Michnavan and Vorotan, were urban. Over the years, the people of Kashatak were cultivating 25,000 hectares in the region and were engaged in the cattle farming, beekeeping and gardening. After the liberation, there was an opportunity to study the history of our homeland, which is witnessed by several dozen churches, hundreds of hajkars and tombstones, castles and settlements, bridges and springs. The historical name of Kashatak was not chosen by chance. It has been half a year since the situation changed, and 30 years later we left our homeland to the Turks again. We can only hope that we will once again become the owners of our historical homeland and that the liberation of Berzor will remain one of the glorious pages of our people. U.S. President's National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan spoke separately with caretaker Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan of Armenia and President Ilham Aliyev of Azerbaijan, the White House reported. Mr. Sullivan conveyed the commitment of the United States to peace, security and prosperity in the South Caucasus. He expressed concern over recent tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan and emphasized that military movements near undemarcated borders are responsible and provocative. He welcomed the ongoing communication between the two sides and both leaders' commitment to resolving this issue peacefully. In addition, he underscored the need for the two countries to conduct formal discussions to demarcate their international border. Finally, he conveyed the commitment of the United States to achieving regional reconciliation through bilateral engagement and as a misgroup co-chair. According to experts, Azerbaijan plans an attack possibly in a few directions. 
The observers have noticed the transfer of Azeri military equipment to the Nakhijevan region, so the Azerbaijani army can attack the Armenian territories in two directions at once. Armored vehicles, field artillery and military tracks are seen in the video, proving the transfer of Azeri forces. Obviously, all these weapons can be used not only for protection, but also for attack. Taking into consideration that the Armenian side doesn't take any aggressive measures, it's obvious who will be the first to start. In the framework of International Museum Day, the History Museum of Armenia presents Karasham Cup 40 Centuries Old Witness of History animation video. Made on the initiative of the grant project of the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sport of the Republic of Armenia, the ministry reported via news.am. The video presents the cup, which is considered a unique specimen in the world, kept in the History Museum of Armenia. It was found during the excavations of one of the Middle Bronze Age tombs in Karasham settlement of Kotaik region, and dates to before Christ 22 to 21st centuries. Ancient ritual symbolic scenes are framed on that unique pattern. Turkey is one of the free countries with the highest number of imprisoned intellectuals in the world. This became known from the report of Freedom of Writing 2020, published by the U.S. branch of the International Pen Writers Association. According to the published data, China is in the first place, where 81 intellectuals are imprisoned. Saudi Arabia is in the second place with 32 imprisoned intellectuals, and Turkey is in the third place with 25 intellectuals. The report says that as a result of the amnesty announced in Turkey in 2020, convicted criminals were released, but no political prisoners. According to the report, 25 intellectuals, academicians and writers are imprisoned in Turkey. There are 273 intellectuals, writers and academicians in the prisons of the world. The Caucasus Heritage Watch reports that the centuries-old Armenian cemetery north of Shushi has been partially destroyed. The expensive cemetery, which spans both sides of the road, contained 96 tombstones dating from 1834 to 1920 that included the graves of noble Armenian families known as Meliks. The cemetery also housed two 12th to 13th century cross stones. Let us remind that the ancestors of the Turkish barbarians appeared in the Shushi region only six centuries after the installation of these tombstones. Singers of opera and ballet theater after Spendiarian, Libari David Isyan, Hasmik Torosyan, Kim Sarksyan, Mary Movsisyan will perform at the opening gala concert of the 19th International Music Festival. Vasily Sinaisky is the conductor. As Armen Press reports, the concert will take place on May 22 at the Russian State Museum of the Mikhailovsky Palace in St. Petersburg. The art director of the festival is merited artist of the Russian Federation, Maria Safaryans. Now we present you Doni Yar by Akunk Ensemble. <laughs> The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.